Hi, Kevin Martin here. This is the second part of my admissions review series. So the first introduction, I kind of gave an overview for what admissions reviewers will see after you submit your Apply Texas application. Um, even the font that it looks like, the interface. So this is roughly what your reviewer will be seeing. I didn't review or score the application in the last video, but in this one, I will provide my analysis. So what admissions reviewers are looking for is to assign the student a score on one to six, one being the lowest, six being the highest. Um, but not all fours and fives are created equally. So, you know, there can be some fours that are better than others, some fives that are better than others. And it's possible that applications can, can often be on the, the margins between two scores. So at the end, I'll provide kind of an admissions results and analysis. I'll tell you what I think about this application. I'll provide probabilities for if there were if there were a room of 100 people, what scores might that might that room give this student? Um, if throughout this video, if you want to kind of take a longer look at the essays or the resume, just press the pause button. But I'll go through this kind of quickly. You know, admissions reviewers in practice are going to spend no more than 10 to 12 minutes on each application. Sometimes the read can be as quick as a you know six or eight minutes. What ends up happening towards the end of the admission cycle? You know, after reviewers have seen hundreds of applications, is they have a pretty good idea of what a four is and what a five is. And throughout this, this file, you know, I'll let you know, okay, like, yeah, the student's sitting at a three or they're sitting at a four, you know, maybe, you know, I'm looking for reasons to bump them up to a five or a six. And so I'll let you kind of see the inside, you know, the, that, that internal psychology between admission and review that's going on as a reviewer is, is moving through your application. So the very first thing that pops out to your reviewer is their, their biographical contextual information. So, so readers are looking for any signs of hardship. So this is a student who, you know, comes from a, a pretty well-off family. They're college educated. You know, they're, they're from a suburban environment. They go to a, you know, a private school. You know, the student has marked that they are Latino and it seems to maybe play some role in their family. Perhaps he speaks Spanish at home. That's something that as a reviewer, I'll, I'll take note of and, and look for later on, either in the, you know, resume for, for relevant activities or in the essays if they've decided to talk about it. So the student doesn't have any activities or obligations that prevent them from participating in extracurricular activities. Some students come from families where their you know, mother or father is incarcerated, they live with their, their grandparents, or they take care of younger brothers and sisters. It's very rare for students to check yes on this box, but it is an option for them. The student's first choice major is engineering, so they're, they're an engineering applicant. Uh, the, you know, academically, the student's doing pretty well. They're in the top 15% of their class at a non-ranking high school. They've done well in their standardized exams. Their best testing score was this ACT of a 32. Um, even though their math's a little bit low, it's, it's still, you know, it's still pretty good. It's above the, um, you know, it's, it's right up there for, for, you know, being competitive for admission. You know, reviewers also will note the senior year course schedules. This is a student who's definitely not slacking off their senior year. They're, they're taking, you know, advanced calculus and they're taking not one, but two advanced science courses. So you know, as an engineering applicant, it's, it's really great that they're, continuing their preparation for college. So let's jump right into the extracurricular activities. So students, you know, National Honor Society, they're, they're a member. This isn't, you know, many thousands of applicants will have something similar on their on their application. So they're, you know, unless they volunteered or they indicate something in their expanded resume, that isn't something that immediately jumps out. But certainly as a reviewer, you know, okay, as soon as I see that the position is something other than member, that they're competing on a national level, you know, this is this is pretty cool. They're, it's demonstrating a commitment to one activity. They're increasing their involvement over time, starting, you know, as a varsity freshman. Rower is obviously is pretty good. You know, this is practically a part-time job for the student outside of school. Um, so this is something that, you know, I'm hoping as a reviewer that they'll tell us about more in their, uh, in their essays or their resume. Students also involved in math clubs. So this isn't a, a big commitment, but they have increased their involvement over time. This is, again, an applicant who's seeking admission to engineering. So, you know, that's something that will definitely stick out and uh, be a little bit more impressive. Chinese club, this is, a, this is interesting. So I guess this student has decided to, you know, pursue Chinese either in their spare time or for, for classwork. And um, although they're just a member, that is pretty cool. It is, you know, a little bit above and beyond the, the typical Spanish or French that you might see. And the student's already bilingual, so it's neat that they're pursuing at least a third language. Um, tech theater, okay, this is neat. Maybe the student transitioned, you know, maybe full time to crew um, after their after their sophomore year. But, um, you know, these are things that kind of make the student a little more well-rounded. So they're an athlete, they're, you know, involved in theater, and they're also doing some academic things as well. So volunteering, they have, you know, some nice volunteering hours. It's nothing too impressive, but again, it 
kind of fills out that, that well-rounded um, impression of the student. So we have a variety of activities here. Um, you know, nothing sticking out too well, but we do have some more information here about crew. So we've got, you know, freshman crew MVP. So this is, you know, student who demonstrated leadership at an early level. It seems like they were part of a team that was highly successful state and regional champions. This is, you know, as good as it gets in the state of Texas, you know, crew isn't, you know, the most popular activity, but it's certainly one that, you know, there's many dozens of schools and teams that compete in. Um, this is some interesting information. So he actually re represented their team at, at their state conference. And so presumably there was, you know, a variety of other crew teams that were represented. So, you know, again, this is this is going above and beyond just competitions, but this the student is representing, you know, his school and his teammates, you know, something um, bigger than just weekends on the lake. So they seem to be pretty busy during their summers. Maybe that accounts for, you know, they've got some good volunteer hours, but obviously the student has is, is, is got some things going on. You know, they were an intern. Um, they were able to, to shadow a, a, a company, you know, during that summer after their junior year. Seems like they've got some cool kind of self-employment activities. That's something maybe they'll, they'll tell us about later on in their essays or their resume. But, you know, again, this is kind of uh, to, to further well-round that student. So, you know, after looking at their academics and, you know, their commitment, you know, deeply to one activity and they've got a few commitments to things like math club, they've got these internships. You know, the student's probably, you know, right in the middle of, be, of being a four, you know, maybe even a high four. I think some reviewers at this point might even see this student as a low five. So... So let's take a look at their essays and see if we can uh, have some reasons to elevate or promote them to a higher score. <clears throat> so just immediately we have a really strong introduction. So the students beginning to use to, to build a, a metaphor, this idea of, you know, being from a, you know, a mixed nationality, a mixed, you know, multi-ethnic family, Cuban, German, American, they've got this concept of paella, which is pretty cool, and, you know, using that as a framework to discuss, you know, the different aspects of their family. Let's look at the second paragraph. So we've got some really good visual language here about their holidays, you know, pots clanging, people shuffling in the kitchen. This reminds me, for example, of time when I was at my grandparents' house during Thanksgiving or Christmas or, you know, watching the Dallas Cowboys football games on Sundays. We used to do that at my grandparents' house, for example, and it seems like that's, you know, a really key component of, of this student's upbringing and, and their own identity. Towards the end here, we have sort of an interesting interesting introduction. So we have the introduction of a new family member, Tomas. Let's read a little bit more about Tomas and see what's going on. Again, we have this metaphor here. He's our, our family's most special ingredient. It's really good visualization. You know, you, you're getting a lot of empathetic language here. You can tell, you can tell the, the applicant really cares for, for, his, uh, for his cousin. You're seeing a lot of maturity here, right? So it's not like, oh, Tomas is the greatest kid in the world or, oh, he's, he's really terrible. But it's, it's, yeah, you know, Tomas, he requires a little bit of attention. And it, it made me, pushed me to learn a little bit more, to adapt my own life, to, to accommodate him. In the student, you know, they talk, you know, it's not all rainbows and sunshine, right? Like this, this is a really good example of how not everything is black and white. This is the development of ideas, the nuance, uh, complexity with language that reviewers are really looking for. So, so immediately this essay is standing out as one that's uh, well above average for the typical applicant. This is, you know, about as good as it's going to get for an essay A. You know, really, this is, this is an example of, of an outstanding essay. Well, what's important is the student brings it back to, to the applicant. So uh, apparently, especially for SAA, it's important to, you know, tie lessons that, that they've learned and to sort of have, you know, it's not all about Tomas, not all about the grandparents, but he, but he takes away some good things. You know, people are complex and multidimensional. When we apply labels and make assumptions, these sometimes become unintentional put downs. You know, ties back to, to yeah, this idea of unconditional love pushes me to, uh, pushes me to my boundaries sometimes and I want to give up, but I realize that, you know, it's important to be, to be patient. Um, and I think this is, yeah, a very thoughtful essay, one that, that uh, adds a lot of depth and complexity to the student's application profile. So let's take a look at essay B. So yeah, you know, right now we're definitely sitting at a high four, maybe a low five. This, you know, the student is right there on the edge. <clears throat>
again, starting the introduction off with a really good visualization. Still, student tells a, a great anecdote about um, winning a rowing competition. So again, it ties back into that resume. So you know, really hammering home that this is an important part of his identity. But he goes on to say that it wasn't always like this, you know, so though he won freshman MVP, you know, under that talent awards section, he wasn't always, you know, just a natural, you know, gifted student or gifted athlete in the sport. He talks about moving and how it was a difficult transition and how the first, you know, few weeks of practice were pretty tough. And, you know, wanting to quit, the coach kind of pushed him. And again, we have got a really good development of, of thought here. It uh, provides a lot more context to that resume. And again, we got a little bit of overcoming adversity here. There's times where, where the student wants to quit. And, and, you know, fortunately, his coach and some of his older teammates kind of took him under his wing a little bit. And uh, we know what could have been a student that, that maybe would have quit their freshman year as someone who's really kind of persevered and, and overcome his uh, overcome this, this, this activity and come to be something that he really ended up loving. Which he talks about later on, he was, you know, during his varsity season, he was, he was at the position of the boat that had the most kind of responsibility and leadership. Again, if this were the, the new prompts, I'm sure the student would have talked about this under their leadership section of those short answers. But again, we have here another really just a really solid essay, provides a lot of good context to their application. Um, again, ties back into these larger, larger concepts. It's not just about crew, but the things he's taking away from it. So we have a good idea of how the student might be whenever they go to UT Austin. And the, you know, it's more than just getting the awards, but, but there's you know, a larger accomplishment that comes from stepping out of their comfort zone, realizing potential for achievement, um, overcoming insecurities, willingness to, to work hard, um, you know, maybe even mentoring younger students, younger athletes. You know, this, again, is a, is, is a fantastic essay, um, really quality writing here from the student. Essay C. So this is the one that I asked a student to talk about their, you know, tickets anywhere, what would they do? Once again, a fantastic introduction, students using, you know, song lyrics to introduce, you know, so, you know, elaborating more on the relationship with their families and their parents. And then he kind of switches gears here. And he says that he wants to go to like a literal ticket to heaven, like from the Eric Clapton song, which is, you know, it's, that's pretty clever. I think, I think that's a, you know, a really nice touch. I'm sure there's, you know, a lot of students that are just writing about their vacations or like a literal ticket to the Bahamas or something. And the students writing in a more metaphorical sense, which is again, taking, you know, good writing and, and really putting it to that next level. You know, he talks about wanting to have a conversation. Um, you know, of course, you know, if he's going to heaven, he's got to talk with God, right? But he's talking about his, you know, he wants to get in touch with his, with his family. You know, he wants to, to, to visit his dreams and see how his future could unfold. You know, he talks well about, you know, again, talking about your fit for first choice major. He's talking about, you know, the challenges of, of lab work and, and, and doing experiments. He wants to literally experience what it's like to, to, to be physical forces, energy motion. I mean, this student is, is obviously there's a high level of creativity here. Um, this is definitely a rare, a rare, a rare type of essay that I think is adding a lot. You know, it's really arguing well. He's you know, talking about some influences in his own life, people he might want to meet. You know, again, this is a student who's, who's obviously thought a lot about their future ambitions, the types of skills that they have, what their desires, emotions, feelings are. I mean, this is, again, a fantastic essay. And here we have the, you know, exactly why, you know, nuts and bolts of why he wants to study engineering. He wants to make, you know, processes more efficient, streamline, troubleshoot technical problems. And yeah, so, you know, he really kind of works through a lot here. It's about a 600 word response, but he, you know, talks about getting in touch with his family, you know, meeting famous scientists, and then he, you know, really closes it out strong with, you know, returning back to those, 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 you know, Eric Clapton lyrics from the beginning. And so and all in all, these three essays are really quite spectacular. Um, this is, this is about as good as it gets. The students really hitting on all these important issues, why they want to study engineering. You know, talking about their home life, their own identity, interests, overcoming adversity. So it's really you know, checking all the boxes for, you know, thoughtful essay. <clears throat> so let's go through the resume quickly and see if there's anything that sticks out. So again, we've just got a lot of the same. We already kind of saw this on Apply Texas. So it's not really adding a whole lot here. You know, we learn more about crew. So he has, you know, fall, winter, and crew in spring crews. This is obviously... You know, there's a big time commitment in the student's life. And the fact that he's able to do a few things in addition is, is obviously pretty, you know, he's going definitely above and beyond what the typical admin would, would typical high school student would be able to do. Of course, his community service. So 
So now that we've kind of come to the end of the file here, we're looking at about, uh, it's about a 15 minute review, but again, I'm talking out loud, so it's going a little slower. So let's, let's, look, at the, uh, let's look at the admissions results. So as I've talked about, he demonstrates leadership and crew. He's got a few other activities. Essays are well above average, even outstanding for the typical admit, you know, thoughtful perspectives on his family's heritage and, and even how he might bring diversity to campus. You know, even reading through it this time, like, you know, and, and again, just depending on your mood, the first time I read through this, I was like, oh, maybe it's a high four, but I, I think I would probably give this student a five in practice and maybe even a solid five. I mean, these are, are really strong essays. Um, I think most admissions reviewers, you know, might might err on the side of giving the student a four. You know, even some might see it as a three, um, but even some still, especially with the quality of the essays, may elevate the student to, to a six. In practice, I think the student was given a five. Um, their academics were slightly below average based on the student's class rank for the typical mechanical engineering admit. But um, but the student ultimately did gain admission to their first choice major. So I think in practice, the student did get a five or perhaps even a, a six. So obviously, this is a strong application. The, the essays are, are, are really what uh, what pulls the student through, what would convince probably some reviewers to elevate them from a high four, maybe from a lower to a solid five. Um, so I hope you found this video interesting. Um, and if you're interested, you know, uh, feel free to watch my, my future modules.